Greetings and salutations, my beautiful people, and welcome to the Kadekura Show, where I always have to do the duty of deciding whether or not things deserve to be slaughtered or salvaged. Yes, things, because today we're not talking about a game. I'm just gonna get straight to it. Let me introduce you one and all to the creepy doll. Okay, as I'm talking about a horror movie today, it may sound like I'm desperately clinging on to the last breath of Halloween before it dies off for another year, but here's the thing. My girlfriend and I were browsing Amazon Prime Video during the days leading up to Halloween, and we were lucky enough to see that included in our paid subscription to the service was a film simply titled The Creepy Doll from 2011. Obviously, we decided to watch it with a title like that, how could we not? And out of that, out of totally nowhere, the next Catechorus episode was born, because I think we completely unintentionally found another so bad it's great master. Masterpiece. I couldn't leave it be and I'm gonna try and make this the next Halloween classic. It's a joyous watch and I want to share it with you all today. And I know it's November, I know that the scares from October have stopped, but trust me, you're not gonna be scared tonight. This might as well be a fucking Christmas movie. So anyway, the film starts with some creepy humming and creepy lighting and even creepier video stuttering and the most terrifying thing of all... Something that looks like Vaseline on the lens. <laughs> By the way, none of that stuff I listed, that's none of that's my fault. This is the official online movie on YouTube that they have linked on their website, so don't you come knocking at my door and say, I don't know what you're doing, I don't know what you're doing, because I do. These, th these guys, th these guys don't though. Anyway, we have a scene of a young woman packing some dolls away into a box while another woman, presumably the mother, stands around and acts like a bitch 20% of the time. But Granny said- I don't care what the old woman said. You are not a little girl anymore. Now. And 80% of the time just stands there looking displeased. <laughs> this is, this is amazing. How do you think the audition process went for this? Okay, yep, so we're still looking for the mother character for the intro to our horror movie, but we haven't quite hit the mark yet. Okay. Next please. Perfect, you get the part! Now. You're so good I could kiss you. Now here's a little fact if you're not into video editing. If you stretch out video clips to slow them down without ungrouping the audio or pitch shifting the audio at least, it causes the original sound bite to remain the same pitch, but sounds all stretchy, echoed and springy. And why am I telling you this? Because they do that in this actual film that's on professional page streaming services. <laughs> Low budget or not, that's kind of basic, I'm afraid. And here we go, title card. Big Biting Pig Productions. My god, if that's not a good name for your film studio, I don't know what is. And what are they presenting for us today? The Creepy Doll. Look at that. I mean, how much more bland and basic could you possibly get for your horror film title? What's next? Like, um, The Spooky Boiler? The Freaky Shoe? The scary house. So we then get a collection of photos that show our main character hating life with her mother and stepfather, but loving life with her granny. Immediately something isn't right, which is made even clearer by her looking at this photo album. Uh, what a lovely front cover that book has. I mean, I know that they always say never judge a book by its cover, but fuck me, I'm not reading that book, Christ almighty. Dick is so nervous about everything working properly. Well, why is that? Has it not been working at all recently? Okay, as it turns out, Mrs. Lady got married to Mr. Man, got pregnant with him, and are now moving into their first house together. And I've got to say as well, seeing Mr. Man looking at the toilet back here is, well, I mean, it just looks like he shouldn't be there. But that's no matter, because now we're talking about the house to the landlords who are Mr. Man's parents, luckily. And we're also going to be talking about what Mrs. Lady used to do when she was younger in her old house. I would set my dolls up in chairs so that they could look out the window. Well, that's very cute and charming. Good for you. My mother divorced my father and she took me to live in a small apartment in the city, windows faced an alley, and I rode a bus to school. Divorce can be so hard on the kids. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Not moving schools, not moving from a location you've known for years, not leaving friends, not downsizing your house, nothing like that. Her parents were rough with her because her dolls couldn't see her outside the window as she had to get a bus to school for her! Oh, the creepy doll! You and Dick have been together a long time. What's your secret? Oh, trust me, you don't want to know what keeps her and Dick together. <laughs> okay, back to Mr. Dad talking to Mr. Man about plumbing. Just don't open this valve here unless you shove the one outside first. Are you happy with her? <laughs> Where did that come from? We want all the same things. 
I mean, that's what matters, right? Oh, no, 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 that's not love, son. Do you want to know why my wife can't keep away from gold, dick? Of course. Well, you see, the secret is that you take some of the Vaseline off the camera lens behind me and then you stick it up. <laughs> Moving on, we've got more exciting house talk to go through. So, have I softened you up to replacing the cabinets in the kitchen? I don't know. Well, they've been that way since I was a kid. You don't even remember living here. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay, good talk. We don't change the cabinets, but can we get new knobs? Knobs? Knobs I can do. I can definitely go for knobs. Oh, fuck's sake. What is it with this movie and dicks and knobs? Oh, no. No, no. Stop talking about knobs. No, no. Stop it. No, no. Why are you getting so horny over doorknobs? Christ. <laughs> what? What was that? That, my friends, was the greatest introduction to a character in a film you will ever see. Where did she come from? How did she get in so quietly? Why didn't she knock? Why is she just standing there watching them make out? And even after all of this, I mean, she didn't say hello and she nearly walked into them fucking, she still stands there, staring. But luckily enough, Jason, that's him by the way, knows this lady, a family friend named Samantha. Also, best to tell your actors to yawn before you hit record. Okay, so Kate, this lady here, and Samantha go for a wander around the house, which is when we find... Oh, this lovely room. And then out of nowhere, Kate goes off on one about a story her grand told her about dolls that come to life and mutilate wolves and bears to protect their families. You know, as you do. And then this spooky tale is swiftly interrupted by... Kate. <laughs> I don't know why, but that's very funny. Now there's more talking, Samantha's a therapist, and Jason can't say wait very convincingly. Wait. <laughs> Time to open the moving in gift Samantha got for them. We haven't even uh, opened your gift yet. What'd you do with it, Kate? Oh. And with that, the looking for the gift scene is over. And now it's time for Samantha to leave because she's too busy making faces like this. And then we get another spooky music cue, dramatic build-up, audio fade out for something to happen, and... She carefully goes over to adjust the present hanging on the wall. I can't take the suspense anymore! They then take another look at the most fucked up doll I've ever seen. I guess if anything was going to be done right, it was the thing that the title of the film is named after. And then Kate decides to... I'll stick her on you! Hey, Kate! <laughs> Just Jason, you scream like a girl. Okay, maybe you've seen more life than myself, but I can't remember the last time I heard a little girl scream like- Hey! So Kay goes over to see her mother-in-law with Dick never leaving her side when she notices a guy taking pictures of young girls who then all decide to stop what they're doing and stare at her. Yeah, yeah, just just leave him there. And then she sees another man trying to get another young girl in his truck because he has a puppy in there for her. But oh wait, it turns out he's her dad and he's angry with her. And that creepy fucker taking pictures? Don't worry, he was just picking up his daughter too and he thought it would look great for everyone else if he hid an archway and took pictures of them all together. Nothing weird there. And wouldn't you know, this random collection of pedophile misunderstandings means absolutely nothing and goes nowhere. Cut to the in-laws house and they very sensitively have pictures of Jason and Samantha from when they were younger and uncomfortable to be close to each other everywhere, ready for Kate to see. Gee, I hope this doesn't cause a ruckus. And great, she starts rambling about how Samantha's mother and her were best friends and how she's practically a mother to Samantha. What the fuck is wrong with these people? There's a time and a place for this, and not in front of a clearly concerned newlywed to your son. What the fuck? Looks like Samantha and Jason were pretty serious at one time. Ancient history, as they say. Oh, really? So take the fucking pictures down! Am I going mad? Does this not seem wrong on every level? Now, this gives Kate an excuse to go home and be understandably pissed off Jason ever told her that Samantha and him were actually together and engaged at one point. But then even she starts being a bitch about it. And you just glossed over it like you barely knew her. Oh, what? This? Them being family friends for years? This is glossing over it? He wasn't pretending anything. I mean, are we in the same movie right now? Are you talking about the Titanic? And you were engaged to her. But it didn't work out. How can I compete with that? Hmm, well, I don't know, Kay. How could you compete to that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that you're married to him! Congratulations, you won! You should have told me. Yes, I agree. He definitely should have. Don't do it again. Don't do what again? Get engaged and don't tell her. What the hell is she talking about? Oh, also, every so often you see an overexposed, soft contrast shot of the characters from the doll's eyes. Clearly the thing is alive, so the surprise of that has fizzled. And then Jason swears he sees the doll staring at him, leading him to make a noise like Knuckles from Sonic Heroes. Shit! 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 shit. Oh, Kate, you accidentally broke the gift from Samantha. You can't fool me. Look at that. Look at that knowing look. Yeah, I know your secrets. And then the next morning... Oh my god, look, she's... She's talking to the doll. She's talking to the doll. She's talking to the creepy doll. The creepy doll. I know it's alive. It's gonna do something. I haven't... Oh, never mind. What do we get, though? Well, instead of the doll being creepy, how about Kate going over and sniffing Jason to check he wasn't cheating on her? 
okay. And here we come to one of my favorite parts of the movie. They're watching a movie in the movie and Jason does this. He pauses the film, looks at Kate like he's going to eat her, and five seconds later starts the film again. I mean, Hitchcock, Spielberg, Kubrick, Scorsese, give all of your awards to the creepy doll because you might as well have never made a film in your lives with direction like this to live up to. And if the direction was already too much for you, then how about this acting? What was that? And then the scene just ends with them sleeping in the bed. <laughs> but not for long. Quick, follow the crying. Oh no, a doll has been mutilated in the baby's crib, but by who? Wow, Samantha, oh, it's a dream within a dream. No worries, not, not like that was obvious or anything. Let's talk about it very slowly for no reason because we just saw what happened. More pillow talk that lets us know they're both in love, but then she decides she doesn't love him anymore and leaves him alone, only to go and look at the fucking doll again. Nothing happens in the next scene. Do you think that I'm skipping out on any details here right now? Because I'm seriously not. I mean, this is how the film is structured. There's atmospheric, and then there's ridiculously slow and honestly kind of confused. The scenes in the movie want to be slow and atmospheric, but equally they're so sporadic and repetitive, it can't seem to find that balance between getting points across quickly while being spooky, and instead just says things that are either pointless or already spoken about, or does nothing at all before removing the tension entirely and cutting to the next scene suddenly. It's also worth saying we are nearly half an hour into this 90 minute film, and the main thing that this movie is named after, the creepy doll, is not only barely in the film at all, but also hasn't done a single thing thing yet, except, oh, I don't know, looking a bit sad? Ah oh, well, maybe the creepy doll will pop up after this bit. We have a dinner party to go through with the in-laws and more family members, and Kate was definitely not expecting this reaction to what she's gonna say here. Best ribs in the South. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, they make some pretty good ribs in Atlanta. Oh, bitch! Oh. <laughs> I like to think that she had no idea what was coming next in the script. Look at that face. Oh, bitch! Oh. And oh look, it's the guy we thought was a murderer earlier. Turns out that he's just Jason's cousin. Small world, huh? Yeah, you could say that again. It's almost like they couldn't get any other actors. And what is it with these kinds of films that all need to have a dinner scene like this in them? I mean, I'm not complaining, I love them, but it's just so weird how similar they all are. And I wish I could say something about this one in particular, but nothing interesting happens here until the conversation shifts to Kate's doll collection. The kid wants to see them and then Kate says it's okay after dinner time. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this happens. And sometimes they would see me to sleep at night. It was always the same song. I will never forget it. It was Go Tell Aunt Rhody. You know it? It goes, Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. Go tell Aunt Rhody. The old gray goose is dead. Okay, so then we move on to... The one she's been saving. The one she's been saving. The one she's been saving to make her feather bed. Let's try that again. So then we move on to... Oh, fuck's sake. Okay, I know this is trying to be scary. But it isn't. It's so out of nowhere and so unnecessarily dark that it's just fucking hilarious. And it's even funnier that everyone else around the dinner table has no idea what to say as she's insanely smiling and giggling while she sings it. It's so out of character and sudden and never mentioned again that I think this is my next favourite bit of the movie. Let's move on though. Kate spots Jason and Samantha talking on the sofa being strangely close. And then we find out Jason's cousin also dated Samantha. I mean by this point who hasn't? I'd be surprised if the curtains haven't dated her. And then we find out that these two were both on again off again relationship goers the plot is thickening and then oh dear the child is being naughty and playing with the dolls without Kay. I think we can see where this is going <laughs> oh no but, but what happened you know, let that doll creep her out oh come on what, what is that face for why is that so unreasonable look at this thing I have a feeling as well that your chin wants to be an actor because it's desperately trying to break into the shot here oh here we go here's some drama get ready for an argument after the girl from earlier Chelsea outright screamed for her life from the mere presence of the doll Jason wants Kate to put a few of them away for a bit not trash them but just move them away temporarily because he's now worried about what the dolls will do to the baby you know what makes perfect fucking sense to me but does it make sense to Kate though? <laughs> well, you just sit and watch. 
much. That's not why you want me to get rid of the dolls. You want me to get rid of the dolls because Samantha doesn't approve. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I mean, even if he did like her and was just doing what she said, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, is she planning on moving in with them? Is she going to be going into that room regularly? Is she going to be moving a fucking office in there? I mean, uh, why would her opinion change the way the baby's room looks whatsoever unless she was living there? It makes no fucking sense. Calm your shit down, you dingbat. And this meltdown from Kate keeps on going. I don't care what Samantha thinks. Just because Samantha was the one that your mother wanted you to marry. Just because Samantha was your first fiance. I don't care what Samantha thinks. This has nothing to do with her. And after that major bitch push, Jason says he's seriously concerned that the dolls are worth more to her than her own baby, which doesn't- Fine! <laughs> I guess it is a horror movie. Can we just have that one more time? Fine, fine, fine. And it just keeps going and going, and she acts like she's being told to pack up and leave the house. But she's not, she's just being told to put her fucking dolls away. My God. Look, Kate, I'm sorry. <laughs> Jason, don't give in to it. You are being unreasonable. Oh, bro! That though, that's unreasonable. And so understandably, out of anger, he throws the creepy doll away, only to then apologize straight away like he just hit his wife. And then... Uh, oh, my God, God. Uh, oh my, Jason, there's something wrong with the baby. Oh my God. He threw the creepy doll down, bent the limbs, and now she's having stomach pains. This must mean something. Oh my God. This means she's giving birth to a doll, isn't it? Oh my God, she's giving birth to a creepy doll spawn of Satan, baby. This must have mean she secretly had sex with like a baby born doll. You know those kinds of ones. You know the ones that shit and piss everywhere, but instead of shitting and pissing it just in her. So now they go to a hospital with carpets that looks like an office block and the next best scene ever happens with a random couple that come through with a lady that's just about to give birth. And the dad is kind of being a dick about the whole thing. Another one for the scrapbook. <laughs> Little Georgie's about to join the world. Are you gonna take pictures like that all day? You're gonna need like batteries. Oh no, my brother's bringing the camcorder. But you gotta record this occasion for the whole family, you know? No! No, 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 no. Reel it in, movie. Take a step back and breathe. I understand that that's what you think that happy couples are like, but when a baby is just about to be born, that isn't real. And furthermore, what the fuck? He's filming the birth for the family. Look at her vagina fucking rip. Mr. Dr. Cox. You're fucking serious. Now we have Daddy Dick, Horny Doorknobs, and now Dr. Cox. I think there's an underlying message in this film. I'm sorry. No, you didn't do anything wrong, man. This is so frustrating. I'll clean up the baby's room, okay? No. I will tomorrow. I, I don't mind, really. I don't want you to touch them. Wait, you're being serious? You wait, you're okay with this? You're not gonna you're not gonna argue this? These fucking dolls are driving her insane and Jason is still the bad guy over a load of dolls. What's wrong with these people? Ah, oh, so the next morning dawns and Kate goes for a shower. Oh sorry, I said that wrong. I didn't mean her shower. I meant her daily bucket of giant rusty nails falling on her head. <laughs> And before going to work, Jason sees the other pictures in Kate's Book of Wonders, where it's clear she doesn't like her mum and stepdad. And then all of a sudden, pink dressing gown Kate jump scare. <laughs> So a load more of nothing happens and then Jason takes the doctor's orders from earlier and tries to book Kate in for counselling. With Samantha. Fuck. So Jason and Samantha talk about Kate for a bit. Nothing happens and then- Oh fuck! Oh, oh. Oh no, don't worry. Nothing's happening. They felt too guilty. He's gonna go home now. Oh no, it's not time to get out. Dr. Cox is out! Dr. Cox. We're also coming up to an hour of this hour and a half film and the doll that the film is named after has yet to be creepy or do anything significant or be a plot device. While the promiscuous fucking goes on, the cousin picks up Chelsea's jacket left from the night before, and they talk again about more shit that we've already seen and already know, followed by probably the most awkward silence in cinema history. I got distracted. Ooh, I could hear your bones clicking from the cringe there. He leaves and then Kate has her first proper conversation with the doll. Finally, it's part of the film now after an entire hour. But oh, the mother-in-law has arrived at the door. And by the way, Kate has been sharing a lot of granny anecdotes through this film. My granny always said, what a man wants for his wife, he wants for his life. And when a man crosses his wife, he better run for his life. And now she thinks it's a perfect time to share another granny anecdote. My granny always said, 
can share your tea, but not your secrets. You never know when you'll need your secrets. What are you talking about? Oh, look, more great acting. You okay? You're right, Paul. And then we have another sniffing scene. Okay, you know something? There was the original sniffing, then the singing at the dinner table, then the complete temper tantrum over dolls, then telling old women to share their tea, but never their secrets. And now there's more sniffing. Well, it's pretty clear to me now. I put the wrong film on. This isn't the creepy doll. This is the creepy sniffer wife. Fine! Oh dear, Samantha called Jason. We have another knowing look there. Samantha then discovers something sinister about Kate on the internet. And then we have a flashback. Not to do that anymore. Okay, well, <laughs> I must be honest, I didn't see that coming. Seriously, that's a half decent plot twist. It explains a lot behind why Kate acts like she does, and like I said, I didn't expect that. This is then ruined by the fact that Jason then gets killed in the best stabbing scene ever. <laughs> <laughs> And for literally no reason whatsoever. I mean, if she was so mad about him and Samantha getting it on, I wouldn't understand. I mean, she's a psychopath. That's a reasonable reaction for a psychopath to do, but she doesn't have any evidence or anything. So yeah, this is just fucking stupid. Samantha then tries to call Jason, who is now dead, lol. So on a whim, she arranges to meet Kate at her house. What? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Seriously, that would fit right into a comedy show. Watch again. What? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> Then the cousin comes down to make sure Jason is okay because he isn't answering his phone because he's now dead, lol. And then, oh, that's the thing. Okay, okay, what? Why? The mother-in-law then drives up to check on her, and by this point, Kate is surely running out of room to store those piling bodies. But before we can think about that, it's time for the obligatory eating barbecue rib scene. And I know what you must be thinking, and honestly, this is what I thought the first time I saw this as well. You'd think that she's actually a cannibal as well, and she's eating the flesh of all of her victims. And for a second, I figured that'd be kind of creepy. But no. Any mystery about that scene isn't there, because the cousin brought over some barbecue ribs from a place he works at a couple of minutes ago and gave them to her when he came over, and the rest of the movie doesn't even allude to the fact that she could be eating ribs or eating people, so sorry to ruin it, but yeah, all this exists for is being a hardcore barbecue ribs eating scene. Oh, uh, wait. No, 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 wait. Isn't it illegal for landlords to enter their tenant's house without notice? Isn't she breaking the law? Oh my god. Okay, so Kate then appears behind her mother-in-law, covered in rib sores, and she didn't answer any calls, answer the in-laws screaming around the house, says her husband is in the back, and then makes this face. Yeah, you go off there, lady. I'm sure you'll come out of this spick and span clean as a whistle, not dead. My granny always said. Oh, shut the everlasting fuck up about your goddamn granny. No one cares. Now, dear. I'm not your fucking dear. Oh, shit's going down. She's coming for you. Oh, she's coming. Oh, she's coming very, very slowly. Uh, um, you know that there's a back door to the house, right? You were, you were in the back garden earlier. You own this house. That You know that, right? Furthermore, you know this too. You live in this house. So why are you walking unbearably slow to give her every chance to escape and call for help? I'm open question. She's dead now. Oops. Now, Samantha's coming down. So now we're soon going to be stocked up with about four bodies if things progress any further. But my main question at this point, though, is why is Kate not even acting slightly innocent at this point? It's like she wants to get caught. Oh, and she's acting like a sad little child. Child now. Emily? Mitch? Gone. Gone. Everybody left me. We have to protect the weak and the innocent from scoundrels and predators. Okay, I'm totally lost now. What are you saying? Yeah, I'm with her on this. What are you saying? Yeah, I'm still with her on this. What are you saying? Kate, answer the damn question, my god! Oh, look, there's Jason. Flop. You'd better run, Samantha. It's like my granny always used to say. Okay, even the actors now are fucking sick of hearing about your sodding granny, so Samantha tries to strangle her. And then, at the end of the movie, again, out of nowhere, for the first time the doll has done anything of merit, the face goes demonic, which is just lovely, and then for some reason, Samantha looks at the thing, even though it's made no noise and she had no reason to turn around and look at it, and and then Kate stabs her to death in the greatest scene ever where it just randomly zooms in and cuts to completely random bullshit and I love it. <coughs> Then it cuts here, and Kate says that stupid line from before about six damn times. Scoundrels and predators. Scoundrels and predators. Scoundrels and predators. Scoundrels and predators. 
scoundrels and predators. And then it ends on what I thought was a flashback, but actually isn't, because it's the now great granny talking to the newborn baby about the creepy doll starting the cycle all over again. And does this mean that Kate is alive? Is she dead? Is she in prison? Never explained, who cares? Here's some credits with hard rock music in which every single person that appeared in the film for even two seconds long gets a video shout out and it's long, drawn out, hilarious, and this movie is the best thing ever. To conclude though, I mean, you can't be too hard on the creepy doll, really. The acting isn't the absolute worst, and the editing is extremely amateur and choppy, but at least it works like a proper film with audio and video cuts. And the filmmakers are actually very prolific and are clearly loving what they are doing, and the effort and charm oozes out of every corner this film has, which makes me want to watch more classics from them like Francis Stein and Goat Sucker. And they haven't lied about budget or anything, they know it's low budget and it doesn't try to be any more than what it is. And what is it? It feels like Neil Breen doing a horror movie. An unintentionally hilarious, terrible, terrible horror movie and one that I highly recommend that you watch right now. So yes, no shame at all, this movie gets the salvage today. I watched it digitally, didn't I? Shit. I guess this means I'll have to salvage the computer screen that you're all watching this video. Three, two, one. Oh, that shit, bottom twat! This is not good, not good! Why would it do that? I wouldn't have done it if I didn't do it! Hello everybody, and thank you so much for watching this video today. And before I go, I'd like to thank the sponsors for today's video, Audible. And if you go into the description to audible.com forward slash caddy, you can grab yourself a 30 day free trial of the service along with any single book on the entire site for free. Not to mention you get to browse through an unmatched selection of audiobooks of every single type and genre you can imagine. Whether it be a fictional thriller or even biographies read by the stars who wrote them. If you're looking for a recommendation today, well, I personally suggest something I remember fondly from my childhood actually. Stig of the Dump read by Tony Robinson, and he makes the entire story alone amazingly entertaining and funny just from that lovely voice of his. It's Baldrick reading you a book, you can't go wrong. Either way, thank you so much for listening. Oh, I